Hey everybody, Dennis Gebhardt here with Guru Nation. Uh, time for a little conversation and a little coffee. Hope you're all doing well. Hope you had a great week. Um, today I wanted to spend a little time with you in a serious conversation. I really want you to, to listen to what I have to share with you today. As many of you know who follow me, I am... Um, I am very, very particular about education. And my belief system is that as an educator, if you position yourself as that, if you're given that title, facilitator, educator, trainer, whatever, it, it comes with a higher responsibility than just a normal hairdresser sharing their, their information. And what I find is happening over and over and over constantly is so much misinformation and in, in our industry. And finally, I sometimes I just have to call people out. So today, some of you who don't like to call others out may be offended by what I'm about to do. Uh, but sometimes uh, we really have to say something, especially when the information contradicts something we've been doing in this industry for the last 40 years. So the title of my talk today is simply, you have to draw the line somewhere. And so today I am choosing to draw the line uh, with a post that has been occurring on Instagram over the last few days. I'm sure you all are familiar with this video. You've been seeing it where they have been comparing uh, adding water to Shady Q and then adding cream to Shady Q. And uh, it has really created a stir with a lot of people in our industry because they've been using these formulations for years. So I want to just take this whole article step by step. I want to walk you through it and I'm going to call them out for what they are. And the reason I'm doing that is because I was on the team that created this product. So I find it's kind of crazy the, the stories that have happened. And, and it's not just this story alone. There are many stories that have come out about this product. So um, let me just kind of share this with you and uh, we'll bring it up here so that uh, we can see it very, very clearly. Uh, this was posted by Salon Centric. Let me bring it to full screen. This was posted by Salon Centric and they're quoting an artist that is a, actually a Red Can artist teaching this information, which I find crazy. So <clears throat> here, here is a quote. Have you ever heard the myth that if you mix crystal clear with level nine, it makes it a level 10? Well, this is just that, a myth. Crystal clear is utilized to dilute the intensity of a shade, making it more translucent. That's true, okay? Take coffee and water, for example, the water weakens or dilutes the color of the coffee, allowing more light to pass through, but it does not lighten because water or crystal clear has no pigment. Kind of sounds like it makes sense, doesn't it? Well, let's see what else that they say in the finish of this. Uh, when we take the look at the next slide, what they say is now, if you need to lighten the color or your shade because you don't have the physical level you need, you can mix the lightest level or darker level, a lightest level and a darker level. And depending on your mixing ratio, you can create every level in between. This is like when mixing creamer and coffee together, creamer or a level 10 still has pigment in it. Therefore, you can lighten the pigment of your shade. So obviously this person does not understand the difference between dilution and desaturation. And so I want to kind of point that out to you today so that uh, hopefully people can understand because what they're saying here is simply nothing more than nonsense. And I will show you today where I, why I say that. So here's the issue. When we mix lighter shades, let me move the slide over. When we mix lighter shades of color with darker shades of color, we do not dilute. Dilution in and of itself is simply taking a color and lightening it so it is more translucent. That's what translucency is. It's a lighter version of that shade. 
It lightens that shade. So it almost takes it to a different level. We're not doing something physically vertically. It's all horizontal. So we get less deposit and therefore it is a lighter version of that shade without sacrificing the primary tone. Remember, if I want, let's say a darker violet and I want it at a lighter level, if I add a lighter violet to it, especially in Shade EQ, because Shade EQ, all of them have background. Those of you that are Redken users, look at your charts. It says black to gray, brown to tan. So background will desaturate a color. And so when we make hair color, when we make darker levels going to lighter level, the most vibrant tones exist in the darker levels. Why? Because those are the levels, or the strongest tones, I should say, vibrant and strong, those are the tones where it's those are the levels where it's required in order to see the vibrancy because you're dealing with so much depth in the hair. As shades of color are made lighter, they desaturate. In other words, the tones are not as vibrant, which because the hair is not going to be contributing as much contributing pigment. And so they feel that doing a lighter saturation of our de or desaturation of the, of the color will still give you enough tone that you can counteract or enhance the color at that level. So that's what desaturation is. It's a way that permanent hair color is made. Now, the one thing that permanent hair color has working for it when you mix light shades and dark shades is it also has a window of alkalinity. That means there's a ratio of fixed alkali that is creating some breaking down of those artificial dyes at the same time. And so that's what you're getting. You're getting a, a combination, a convoluted result when you mix the lighter and darker shade. You can do that in permanent hair color. There's nothing wrong with that if you have the mathematical equation and if you know how to do it. But that's what desaturation is. That's what adding milk to coffee is. You're desaturating it. Coffee is brown in tone. When you add milk to it, which is white, you desaturate it. Remember, black, gray, and white are in the center of the color wheel. That's what we call achromatic. When I desaturate a tone, I literally diminish the tone, the very thing that I was trying to create. <clears throat> now, dilution is different. Dilution is not a diagonal movement like the red arrow. It is a vertical movement. Let's imagine that I need stronger dye intermediates to counter, counteract warmth that the hair is going to contribute. My level nine ash doesn't have those strong tones because it's desaturated. It's the way that it's made. So could I add clear to a level three ash and bring it up and have stronger tones to counteract that contributing warmth from the hair? Absolutely, you can. So dilution, people are misunderstanding it. It allows for more transmission of light. Google it, ask Siri what the definition of, of dilution is, she will tell you. So we want the color to transmit more light when we're diluting it because we want more light reflection, less light absorption. Does that make sense to you? Because I'm serious. Sometimes these things happen. These people put out opinions, assumptions, and sometimes marketing stories, and they're not accurate. And what, I'm not worried about you if you're doing color and you've been doing it for a long time or you if you've been using shades for a long time. And believe me, I don't own any part of shades. I resigned from Redken in 2010. I am 12 years out from that company. But you know what? They gave me grounding and I truly appreciate it. And look, Shade DQ is still like one of my children. And I hate it when the stories are incorrect about that product because two people, new people getting introduced to the product Will have an adver ad they will have an adverse opinion about it. And you should judge it on its own. 
And that's the problem today is because no one has given us those grounding pieces. Like, why do we teach dilution? It's the way shades was created. Think about it. When we originally made shades, we, had, we only had 16 colors. That's it. I think we own 12 to 16. And most all of them were dark. There were only like three that were light. But we taught people that you could dilute your darker colors and make lighter colors out of them. People have for over 40 years. So don't walk in now because you have just received this information and tell people that that's not what they're doing because they do it every day in their salon. And this is the challenge that we face. Okay, that's why, you know, you can be a self-appointed educator. Nobody, nobody has to govern that today. It's freewheeling out on social media. And so these, big, these pieces of bad information get out there. And people that are actually trying to learn how to color hair, they struggle and they suffer with it. All right, so here's what I want to do. <coughs> I want to share with you my Shade UQ truths. This is Dennis Gebhardt, Captain Color, Guru Nation. This is my truth about the product since I was there at its birth. And it still works the same way. Not much has changed with that product. So here we go. First set of truths. Shades EQ will generate some tonal shift on certain textures of hair. Absolutely. Absolutely, it will. Think about it. You're using an alkaline color. It is alkaline in the bottle before you mix it with processing solution. And even with processing solution, it processes close to neutral, close to seven. We call that neutral, and we think that, well, that's a safe zone. But realize this. Water has a pH of seven. If it's good water, most many water systems now have a pH of eight or nine. So water will swell the cuticle layer itself. So if I'm using a product that incorporates an oxidation product like processing solution, is it possible on certain fine textures of hair that I could create a line of demarcation? Absolutely. We call that tonal shift. Sometimes in the darker shades, you don't even see it and it's not that noticeable, but it is possible for that to happen. So you can't just use it you know, willy nilly and expect it to be a safe thing to work with. You have still have to give it respect for what it is. Okay. It is a permanent hair color. That's exactly what it is. It has permanent oxidative dyes in it. So it's really a permanent hair color that gives you minimal and sometimes no tonal shift at all. So, you know, that's where shades lives. That's the reason it was created. That was the reason it was created. Number two, you will not notice it in darker shades. I just said that. Number three, Shades EQ requires a 20 minute room temperature for full deposit of dye intermediate. 20 minutes, 20 minutes, not five minutes at the shampoo bowl, not three minutes at the shampoo bowl. Now, you know, you do you, because people are doing all kinds of stuff at the shampoo bowl. And then they put in social media, well, you know, I don't like that stuff because it doesn't last. Well, if you only process it for two to three minutes at the shampoo bowl, you've only <laughs> you get you've not given the dye intermediates time to actually connect. So yeah, you've under-processed that product. And by under-processing the product, you diminish the longevity. So don't blame the product. Look at your behavior. 20 minutes. Room temperature is all that you need. You don't need to cook this product into the air. It was never designed to be processed under heat. The original formulation was 20 minutes at room temperature, five minutes with heat for resistant gray. And the only reason we said five minutes was because there was a product called cellophane in the marketplace. <clears throat> and they asked, you know, can we use it like cellophane? Because Sebastian was teaching cellophanes with heat. And of course, you know, we want them to buy the product. We said, sure, you can put it under for five minutes. But it's not necessary. It's not necessary. Shade GQ cannot close the cuticle. Please understand this. Even at the pH of 6.9, the cuticle will still be swollen. In order to close the cuticle, you have to bring it, you have to use something on the opposite side, on the down low on the acid side something 3.5 or 
because the hair's optimum pH is 4.5 to 5.0 on the pH scale. Please understand that shade DQ does not close the cuticle. Shade DQ cannot restore hair to its natural pH of 4.5 to 5.5. I'm sorry. It's a very forgiving product, but it doesn't do that. It's hair color. Shade Q has background in, in addition to tone. Please remember this. Shade Q has background. All blended colors have background. Every time I add a shade to my formula that has additional background, I am driving my formula closer to the center of the color wheel. That's why when I see these Shade Q formulas where they're using uh, 6T, 7B, uh, the, the double blues and all that, all those have background in them. And then they say, look at all the reflect. There is no reflect. You must have a great imagination to see reflect. And the reason for that is because you buried it. And we do that because we formulate from fear. We're not formulating from confidence. And so those are the things I want you to remember about shades. You know, if you understand how to work with that, and this really goes for all demi-permanent hair colors, but I'm focused on shades today because I have an emotional connection to that product. And that's why I want people to understand is that some of these stories you hear are absolutely incorrect. They're not sound. If you mix higher volumes than prescribed processing solution, all you do is degrade the intermediates and therefore reduce the opportunity for full deposit of your desired tone. Absolutely. So for all these creative artists that are in the Eastern part of the United States that are promoting 15 volume with shade DQ, all you're doing is degrading the dye intermediates. There's not enough alkalinity in shade DQ to give you a lot of lift. Remember, they're only using ethanolamine and they're using a very small percentage of ethanolamine. There's no ammonia in Shade DQ. So they just need to keep the dye intermediates alive until you mix it with processing solution and then they start to oxidize. So you're not gonna get added lift. Yet you may think you did because you destroyed some of the color and now you're getting a lot more reflect, but you're not getting the true tone that's in the color because you destroyed the dye intermediate. That's what peroxide does. Peroxide, number one, it prepares the hair. Number two, it delivers the dye intermediates. Number three, it helps develop the dye molecule. And number four, it degrades. That's what you see happening in your bowl. When you see those colors starting to change in your bowl, that's degrading, that's partially developed dye molecules. That'll never get into the hair, <laughs> it won't. All right, you cannot seal the color with Shade DQ Clear. I don't know where this story came from. Shade DQ Clear is the same as Shade DQ Color. It's not a coating product, it's simply the base of Shade DQ without any dye intermediate. It doesn't even give you shine by itself. I know, I know. Some of you are going, wait, wait, I use it all the time and I get shine. Great, you do you. That's what I say, okay? But I'm telling you, <laughs> it doesn't really give you shine. In order to have shine, you must have tone. I mean, you must have reflex. And in order to have reflex, you must have tone. There's no tone in clear. <laughs> so you're not going to get the shine that you're expecting. But you could if you put a small amount of tone in with your clear, just a tiny amount, just enough to create some light reflection, then you would start to get more shine. Sage Q does not set on top of the color you apply it to. I just did a video on this last week about someone saying that they always glaze all of their color services. So they do a permanent color and then they glaze it with Shade DQ to protect it. That Shade DQ will help protect the color and keep it from fading because Shade DQ fades off first and then the color fades off. That's nonsense. Shade DQ is a permanent color. 
when I mix, when I apply it over previously colored hair, guess what? The peroxide fractures, the, the melanin, even the artificial pigment a little bit, makes a space for the new dye intermediates. They are carried into the hair strand. They connect with not only the melanin that's remaining on the hair, but with the dye intermediates from the previous color that you just destroyed and you create a whole new color. That's what you're doing. You know, you're not coating anything. Now, if you use polyurethane, if you go to Home Depot, you can do that. <laughs> well, polyurethane will do a great job on the hair. You'll never be able to comb your hair again, but that's what you need if you want to create a, a protective coating. We have, there are great protective products you can use on your hair. Worry about protecting your color based upon number one, how long you let it process. If you under process it, it's not going to last as long. Number two, how the client takes care of their hair, how you take care of their hair, how you take the hair color down. All of those things play a role in how long the hair color will last. Not if I put a coating of Shade DQ over the top of it. <clears throat> Dilution of Shade DQ colors with clear enables you to create a lighter version of that shade and preserve your desired tone. Mixing lighter shades with a darker shade does not dilute the darker shade. It demonstrates, it des desaturates both colors, creating a new color result. Now, there's nothing wrong if you want to mix a lighter shade with a darker shade. But just remember, you're not diluting that lighter, that darker shade. You're desaturating it. You're changing the color. So I know you probably don't believe me. So let me show you some things here. All right. Here is... 06R processing solution. Okay, 06R plus processing solution. One ounce of clear, one ounce of 09N, and one sixteenth of an ounce is 06R. 06R is a six level color in Shade DQ. Here's what it looks like. 09N looks like this. When I mix one sixteenth of an ounce of 06R with one ounce of 09N and one ounce of clear, Look what I come up with. I come up with a beautiful, beautiful, it's kind of a creamy toner for the hair, okay? 09V is a very popular color to be toning blonde hair with, but here's the problem with 09V. Do you see how flat 09V is? It's desaturated. They have gray in the background. So in 1996, when they desaturated 09V, what happened was it did not have that violet, that primary violet tone that we needed to compensate for extreme warmth that the hair contributed at that level nine. Over here is 03V, much more vibrant, isn't it? Yes, it is. So what happens if I take one eighth of an ounce of 03V with two ounces of clear, look what I create. I create a level nine toner that has much more strength, much more vibrancy, and it will help to control that uncontrollable warmth that's in the hair. Here's 03A terracotta, one of my favorite, favorite colors. I want you to see what it looks like in full strength. 03A and processing solution, full strength. Very deep level three auburn brown. But when I mix one eighth of 03A and two ounces of clear with two ounces of processing solution, I create the most beautiful light auburn blonde toner that you've ever seen. Here's an example. This is a, a, a level nine blonde head of hair. Okay, that's what we're trying to match, a level nine. Don't have it, 9.0. 9, 9 so what we did is we took one part of 6.0, level six, with two parts of clear, and look what we did. We virtually matched it. So I didn't have a nine. I needed a nine. So I made a nine by using the dilution process and making my six lighter. And finally, let me finish off with this one. I'll bring this one to full so you can see. The swatch in the middle is the control swatch. It is just simply the white pivot point yak hair. The swatch on the left-hand side is 03N Espresso. Shade DQ, full strength. The swatch on the right is an eighth of an ounce of 03N, two ounces of clear, 
and two ounces of processing solution. And I have now taken it to a level between a level nine and a level 10 ash blonde toner. Now I'm not saying go back to your salon and use 03N with clear to tone your blonde, although you could. What I'm saying to you is dilution works. Dilution does make the color lighter. It does allow you as a colorist the opportunity to take your color palette and expand it. So if this makes sense to you, you could do me a huge favor as a hairdresser to hairdressers, share this with your friends. Also, don't be afraid to call people out when they send out information, especially when they're an educator. If you're an educator, you are held to a higher degree of responsibility. I know I'm not your dad. I know I shouldn't be lecturing you, but I'm pleading with you. Think about what happens when we send out messages that are not accurate. Remember that we send in words and we receive in pictures. So as a trainer or an educator, it's important that you give accurate information. Please do that for the sake of this industry. I love this business. I have been doing hair longer than some of you who are watching this are old, <laughs> since before you were born. Um, kind of makes me Yoda. And I made my mentor a promise many, many years ago before he passed away. He said, Dennis, I want you to promise me that every day you will do your best to leave this industry in a better place than it was when you got here. And I've done that for him, to pay it forward to him, to pay tribute to him, because that's what he did. And I'm doing it for those that will follow behind us. It's not about you and me now. We've been in the industry a long time. It's about the new ones that decide they want to be part of this wonderful business and experience some of the things that I've experienced that I never in my life would imagine when I sent him my mom's 57 Studebaker station wagon and told her I wanted to be a hairdresser. I've had the opportunity to travel to 17 different countries around the world. Talking about hair color. I've had the opportunity to work with some of the most iconic people in the industry. People that some new hairdressers, will, you'll, you'll never meet them in person because they're gone now. <clears throat> but they, they, they help shape our business. They help shape and build the discipline. And that's what I want to leave for those who follow behind us. I want to leave a pathway that is lighted so that you don't have to struggle like we did. We struggled because there was no social media. <laughs> there was no hair show every weekend. We did not have access. We had to seek it out. Today, it's like a buffet of information, a plethora, if you will. The problem is not everything on the buffet is good for you. <laughs> so you need to be cautious about that. And always ask more of yourself. As a hairdresser, when I work in the salon, I always, you know, I do a great job. My client loves it. And I say, well, okay, how can I make it better next time she's here? As a trainer, I do the same thing. People come to my classes and they go, oh my God, it was the greatest class I've ever had. And I'm going, yeah, now I need to figure out how I can make it better for you next time. Because I want to raise the bar on our industry the population, people, society doesn't really consider hairdressing, you know, a great profession to be part of. Many of you have gone through that, but it is. It's an amazing industry. We give the good touch. People come to us and they're a little, you know, they have self, they're self-conscious, they're a little intimidated, and then we do our magic. And suddenly you see this gorgeous butterfly you know, bloom from this little caterpillar that did not have a lot of self-confidence. You know, we, we do that in our business. It's a wonderful, wonderful industry. We become extended family for so many of our clients. You know, that's why I always say we are essential. 
you know, we, we start off as a service person helping, you know, giving them consultation and giving them help grooming. We then become a friend. We then become a sounding board. We then become sometimes a psychiatrist. We then become, you know, a coach. And, um, you know, those are all things. Many of you have gone through that, just like me. You know, I have people that I started doing their hair when they were in high school. Then they got married. Then they had kids. And then their kids had kids. And now they're coming. That's how wonderful this business is. I just want everybody to be successful. And the only way we can be successful is to clean up all the nonsense. And one person can't do that. It takes all of us who are committed to this business to really say, look, this is enough. Some of these amazing, you have to stop this. You know, give people the facts. Give people the truth. Let them make informed decisions. So I've gone on way long enough today. I'm really sorry. This should have been a shorter, but oh, you caught me in one of those spots. So I do want to share with you a little bit of information about some of our upcoming classes. People have been asking, you know, because we teach hair color mapping, we teach hair color code. If you don't know what that is, you need to come and visit us. You need to come and play in our sandbox. But we have a new program coming up called Map It Out. It is about hair color mapping. We talk about hair color theory. We give you some basics there. And then we show you how to build a hair color map. And the reason that we're doing this, because it's been, re it's been requested from those who've gone to Formulation Foundation, Formulation Mashup, Principles of Color, and even in Hair Color School. They say, it's great. You introduce it to us. <clears throat> but we want to have more. So we are designing a program that will give you more. And so that will hopefully be very, very successful and beneficial for those who attend. We also wanted to share with you that February 28th, you know, because if you're a real science nerd and you want to, want to learn what's really happening when we work with hair color, it doesn't matter whose hair color it is, you know, doesn't matter whose hair color you use, pretty much all hair color is the same. And so um, Max and I are going to be doing that program and kind of taking you inside the inside the chemistry of how hair colors are made. And I think you'll find it very, very uh, eye-opening, very awakening for a lot of people. And then, of course, uh, our third session for Hair Color School comes up the spring of this year. Its first session is March 6th. And um, Yvette and Max and I are the three coaches in this program. It is a full 30-day program. Um, we have four sessions together, plus homework between sessions, plus you're on a messaging thread with us 24-7. It gives you a whole month of immersion in hair color and hair color theory. And so if you really want to learn all the ins and outs, we recommend that you come and spend some time with us. And of course, I need to tell you about my book. I'm so excited. I cannot tell you what a feeling of completion <laughs> that is. Uh, many people have asked about the book. It is in editing. I should be getting the first edited copy of it um, here within, hopefully, within the next couple of days. Um, and then I'll have to send that back to them and everything else we've put together. Uh, but they have informed me that uh, we can start accepting advanced uh, pre pre-orders of the book. Uh, starting in April, it will be on our website. So you can pre-order the book, um, a signed copy, if you would like, we're, we're going to do signed copies on the website. And um, <clears throat> you can you can do that. And uh, as soon as the book comes in, it goes directly to you. So I'm very excited. And that's one of the reasons that I'm really making a stand with a lot of this information is because it's in my book. And uh, the book tells you everything, what everything we teach at Guru Nation, everything I have taught for the last 40 years, with the exception of color correction and us uh, and blonding and things like that, which is uh, another book that we're working on as well. And then I'm really happy to, uh, to announce that uh, Guru on Location is going to happen this year. We know we're coming to Chicago in April. And we just yesterday got a connection, uh, a talk from someone in Covington, Louisiana. So I'm not sure on those dates. We're going to talk about those dates. 
and uh, just keep an eye on it and watch and hopefully you'll come and visit with us live and in person. And while you're waiting to do that, we invite you to visit with us online. You can find us on Facebook at Guru Nation. Uh, you can also uh, find us at Guru Hair Tribe, which is a private non-branded forum. All you need to do is ask for uh, admittance to be a member, and then one of our administrative people will, um, will bring you in. You can also reach us on our website which is www.gurunation.net. People, some people still have problems getting to our website. And I have been told by our IT people that it's because they don't clear their cookies or they don't clear their cash. <laughs> so what we've done is we've created a shortcut on Instagram. So if you go to my Instagram page, which is at RealCaptainColor, there is a link in my bio. It's Linktree. Uh, forward slash real captain color and that will take you directly to link link tree and then you can click on for the educational page take you right to our educational page you can visit all of our education you can go to our home page you can visit our gallery and you can make your purchase of tuitions right there on the website so please come and visit us um, you can find me at real captain color uh, you can find max at Max M Hair, you can find Yvette at Yvette uh, underscore Frontani, and you can find Erica Blancet. She's also one of our team members at Erica Blancet. Also, you can follow us on YouTube. Uh, this program, this broadcast is done on YouTube as well. We love YouTube subscriptions. We're trying to grow our following on YouTube. So if you're watching us on YouTube, um, please uh, subscribe right down here below. You can subscribe to uh, and you'll get notification every time that we uh, launch a broadcast here on YouTube. And so, my friends, that is it for me. Uh, I appreciate very much that you have taken the time to uh, spend with me today. And uh, hopefully this has given some clarity to some of you. And hopefully it's given you inspiration to really focus on making our industry better. We must do that because <clears throat> that's the only way that our, and our industry will grow in its professionalism. And I believe that it's a really important thing that we do. And we can only do that as a group. No one person can do it. Everybody needs to work together as a team. So until I see you either in person or until I see you online at one of our other broadcasts, as always, from my heart to yours, I am Captain Color. I'm out. You guys have an amazing day. We'll see you all soon. Bye-bye.